2006, 2007, 10 years after, exactly, fuel levels came down about the same levels. And then spike, and then spike. 10 years after, we have an all-time low record for free, fear. Never before in the history of this indicator has fear been so low. So what happens when fear is so low? People buy, people invest. However, if history repeats itself, fear levels are gonna spike at some point, and we are just about, you know, in that 10-year low point. That is helping to offset what's going on on the population side for countries like Europe and China. But at the same time, it's helping like a double effect on countries like the US, Asia, and the Middle East. Good population dynamics, but also good uh, uh, sentiment indicators. And the other topic that it's important to follow is the manufacturing cycle. The manufacturing cycle typically works like this. Two good years, two years of expansion, two years where, where every month the rate of growth of activity accelerates 1% one month, the next month 2%, the next month 3%, higher and higher and higher. But then that cycle turns into a slowdown. Instead of growing 5%, you grow 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1, and then you contract. Well, where are we in the manufacturing cycle? For the past 12 months, the manufacturing cycle in the world has been accelerating every month at a higher rate. Every month at a higher rate. See how prices have followed aluminum prices, that trend. We hit a bottom back in late 2015, and every month better and better and better and better. What countries are behind this upswing in manufacturing activity? I know you cannot see it, but let me summarize it to you. Europe, manufacturing-wise, is growing at the highest rate in 20 years. 20 years. The US is growing at the highest rate in 13 years, the world in seven years, Japan in three years, and China in two years. Accelerating. Look where we come from. Two years of, of slowdown, two years of acceleration, and look where we are. All right, With, in North America, the US is the one that is growing the most. Better than Canada, Brazil, and Mexico. In Europe, Germany and Australia are the ones that are booming the most. Austria. Followed by France, Italy, and Spain. In East Europe, the Czech Republic, Poland, and Russia. Russia is underperforming. We know the reasons, the geopolitical reasons behind that. Turkey, booming. India, booming. South Korea, not so much. And Indonesia, not so much. South Korea is being persecuted by demographic implosion and other factors, and that's the, the main reason why they're not growing that much. Okay, Porky, now tell me what segments worldwide are the ones that are responsible for this boom in the economic cycle and in the manufacturing cycle? Well, auto. Auto production has been growing in, in the past two years at a higher rate, and last year auto production did better than the prior year both in China and outside China. Second sector, construction. Construction is just growing at a steady rate. So transportation is doing better than construction, but construction is healthy. It's growing globally at a 4.2 rate, but has slowed down from 6.5 back in 2014 because China every year is growing at a slower rate because of this population contraction that I was talking about. Packaging, also doing better. Uh, for the first time in five years, it grew 1.9%. So packaging, construction, and transportation, being transportation the most important, and even more for the case of aluminum. Okay, Jorge. So at the end of the day, Jorge, what's the message? The message is that 2017 surprised even harder. Because
because the two manufacturing, the manufacturing cycle and the economic cycle were together at its peak, at its best moment in time. And if you add the US, the Middle East, and some parts of Asia, that its population dynamics were really positive, you had a triple effect at the same time. All right, um, we could talk about other subjects, but I want, to, I, I want to talk about aluminum prices in more detail and really sweet and short. Guys, prices are up 50% since bottoming in uh, December of 2015. Look at the chart, consistent. This is the bottom in two years going up, 50%. Take a look at this chart. The light line is speculation in the LME as a percentage of the total opening interest. And the other line is aluminum prices. Aluminum prices have been driven mainly by speculation, and this is a matter of a fact. You can see it in the chart. Speculation represented 25% of open interest. It now represents 40%. Jorge, so you're saying that speculation has driven prices higher. The answer is yes. But why, Jorge? Well, see, investors have a lot of money, and there's a finite tonnage of aluminum. This chart talks about fear, but it's inverted. It's the opposite. So it's fear, but I inverted the scale, meaning that when the blue line goes up, the light one, that means fear is declining, or risk aversion is, in, is, is, or confidence is increasing. As confidence increases, speculators feel more comfortable to invest. So prices go up in the same measure that, that, that um, confidence goes up. But take a look at the following chart. This chart shows manufacturing activity globally, speculation, and prices. What happens is that investors, speculators, they do not know much about the aluminum industry. They really do not. But they do know about macroeconomic indicators, and they do know about manufacturing activity. They chase macroeconomic numbers. They chase how the manufacturing activity is doing. Every month, there's one indicator that is called the PMI, Purchasing Manager Index that basically summarizes how the manufacturing industry is doing globally. If they see that that indicator goes up, they put money into the LME and the price goes up. If the following month, that indicator gets better, they double up. If the following month, it gets better, they double up. So you can see how speculation has followed this macroeconomic indicator and how prices have been impacted, yes, by demand, but physically, physical demand of aluminum, but also by speculation. Double effect into prices. Well, what happens when prices increase? You may say, Jorge, but production costs for aluminum have also increased. Yes, but production costs have increased about 17% while prices 40, 45%. Big gap. So what happens? Profit margins have increased in China to the record level ever. And profit margins outside China have also increased to a seven year high. Why? Because prices have increased more than production costs. Given physical demand, but also given speculation, with me, which means that of course, if there's a strong speculative component in prices, prices could fall. For now, they haven't. Speculators still have put uh, money 